Let's talk about the Freefly Ember. It might be the coolest, most fun camera that I have ever owned and shot on. I wanted to go through the trusty pros and cons list, let you know what I thought, give you a review, and see if this is something that you, you'd you wanna shoot on, rent, or even purchase. So let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, this thing is small. It's lightweight. It's about 1.8 pounds, it's a 100 millimeter cube. It's perfect for tossing on a drone, but it's also great to, to rig up to just be kind of this slow-mo run and gun camera. So it's also extremely easy to use and really intuitive. It's got two buttons and kind of a, a wheel to switch through different options. The menu system, again, super basic, but also really easy. To, to navigate through, to figure out, switch up different resolutions, different aspect ratios, the frame rates, the, the different uh, shooting profiles. The other pro was the image quality. I think this is a huge step up from their previous camera, the, the Freefly Wave. Uh, it looks great. 5K, 4K, doesn't matter. The image is great. It's all Apple ProRes. 10-bit uh, 422 LT, easy to grade and also pretty easy to, to work with. Didn't really uh, kill my computer when I was when I was editing on Premiere. Obviously, the frame rates are a massive pro. So 800 frames at at 4K and 600 frames per second at 5K. But you can you can also kind of swap up the frame rates to just suit whatever your needs are and even shoot at 24 frames per second or slower. Um, although I don't know why you would do that with this camera. Then cropping down um, to different aspect ratios, you can get it up to a thousand frames per second. But again, I would stick to primarily the, the 5K 600 or the 4K 800 frames per second. Uh, for me, that, that just seemed to be the, the best options for the different aspect ratios that I shoot at. And speaking of shooting, another pro is that you can shoot on this thing forever. There's no time limit, there's only a space limit. So you've got a, a built-in four terabyte internal SSD, and so you can just press record and shoot until it's filled up, which is incredible. I know so many slow-mo cameras only have a little bit of a, a window that you can record continuously at. So this can record for 36 minutes straight at the 5K 600 frames per second, or up to 45 minutes straight for 4K 800 frames per second. I don't know why you'd shoot that long in any situation, but hey, if you want to, it's got the, the option to do so. The other pros are global shutter, and now they've switched over to an active EF mount option, so it's no longer the Sony E mount, which I, I wish they had, but um, yeah, they've, they've switched over to the active EF mount which is great, so that just opens up a whole bunch of different possibilities. So you can, you can check that out when you build out the camera on their website. And then lastly, their, their app. Their app is, again, very intuitive and easy to use. Opening up your phone and being able to switch stuff up on the fly is, is awesome. Which then brings us into the cons. One is the price tag. $18,000, that's a ton of money. Uh, for some people and for, for certain needs, bigger production companies, rental houses, $18,000, not a big deal. But for your average Joe or your average filmmaker, solo content creator, uh, $18,000 is way out of budget for, for so many people. The second con, this was, this was the biggest con for me. It was the only frustration that I ever had with the camera and that was the extremely slow transfer speeds. So when getting the footage actually onto my computer in order to, to work through it, I couldn't figure out how to get it onto my computer in any kind of fast way whatsoever. It would take forever. Just to get you know five or six clips onto my computer would take hours and hours of time. If you need clips, if you need the video in a pinch, not really gonna happen. The only, the only other way to get around that is 
to use the app and to be able to edit things on your phone. And that's super helpful, but again, it's not, not the highest quality and not the quality that you're gonna need for certain projects. Great for social media, um, but not really, you need, you need that actual file on the computer to, to put that into a project. The next con that I kind of experienced was, was the dynamic range. Now, I've got to say, the dynamic range wasn't something that ever really hindered me in any of my, uh, in any of my shoots or, or while editing, but it definitely was apparent. I mean, the camera, even, even like Freefly had said, they could always have better dynamic range. And this was kind of, uh, one thing that they wish they could have done better and maybe will, will happen in, in the next uh, the next slow motion camera that they, they put out. There were certain times where I had different glitches with the app or with the camera itself, um, just kind of not connecting properly to certain things, but usually just turning the camera on and off kind of helped for the most part, and I was able to 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 get the shots that I wanted. So kind of the, the next two big questions are, who is this camera for? and is it worth it or would I recommend it? Uh, I think this camera is for rental houses or bigger production companies to use. I don't think this is for just the average filmmaker unless you've got just a, a ton of money to, to invest in a piece of equipment like this. Uh, the reason I was able to get it was through another company that uh, wanted slow motion footage. They wanted to, to be able to shoot on this camera. So they just kind of bumped up my pay grade uh, a little bit so I could make those extra monthly payments and shoot for them on this camera. Sad part was uh, when the fires happened on Maui, that kind of that kind of got killed and I was stuck with the camera and, and had to, to sell it because I just, it just didn't make sense to continue to, to make payments on this camera when I wasn't using it as much as I wanted to. So in the future, I would love to get this camera again. Would I recommend it or do I think it's worth it? Absolutely, if you're if you're using this, um, it just creates the coolest shots ever. It's so fun to use. Like I said, super intuitive and easy to, to work with and to shoot with. So I think it is like one of the most fun cameras to shoot on. I, I love slow motion, I love shooting it. Does it work with every single project uh, and every video that I want to shoot? Definitely not. And that's why I haven't purchased it again along with the, the steeper price tag. But yeah, I would recommend this for anybody that shoots a ton of sports. But ultimately, I guess you've got to be the, the judge of it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Would you want to shoot on it? Have you shot on it? Is it worth it? Does the footage look good? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.